everybody, welcome back to Devils United. Back again with another player profile series, and we're back with Hannibal Manjaba. Um, and we've got Tommy. It's good to see you again, Tommy. Uh, I know we last streamed a year ago, but, but a completely different player last time round. Yeah, it's good to be back on, and we're going to enjoy this. Um, talking about Hannibal this time. Uh, we talked about Chung last season, of course. Yes. He was the um loan player on from United, but we've uh, since signed him. We've also got another player now on loan from United, Hannibal Mabry. Um, yeah, looking forward to having a chat about him. He's been an uh, interesting player this season. Absolutely. Um, we'll uh, say hello to people in the chat and then we'll get going. Uh, good evening, Sophia. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. Uh, good evening, Reese. Thank you very much. And just as he said, hit the like, share, subscribe, and also do the same uh, to Tommy as well. I've put the channel in for Blues Focus and also your private one. Do you know where you put the FA Cup final vlog on? Uh, so you can much. subscribe on that, both. Yeah. Um, good evening, Ravi. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Going in like primarily a Golden. Well, I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with that. Um, hey there, Torsen. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Hannibal is a cool name. Uh, it's funny that Ravi's mentioned this. The name Hannibal reminds me of a character Hannibal Lecture from the film. You've done that similar to like his intro, like, did like when he first joined on loan? He, he made it a bit like Hannibal Lecture, didn't you? Just... <laughs> we did, yes. It was the, um, it was, well, I can't remember what the film was now. It's Silence of the Lambs, isn't it? The film. And uh, yeah. yeah, we just had him in like his full blue shirt. Uh, just stood in the um, place where Hannibal Lecter is. He goes, Good evening. <laughs> I thought it was really good for Bill Such. So it's, we're good like that. We're good. I thought it was quality. Like, I've seen a few good videos this season, and that was probably up there with one of my favorites. Like, the one with um, Burnley as well. That was a quality video, too. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. That one was. That was proper in depth. That was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> amazing um hey there paul thanks for coming in hope you are well uh paula said hannibal was amazing at the blues love a good tackle um hey there chris thanks for coming in hope you are well football season now over yeah gutting and hey there musc brumby reds thank you for coming in hope you are well um so we'll go on a little bit about hannibal um because I've been hearing a lot of good things about Hannibal on social media. Uh, people saying he's one of the fans' favourites there at uh, Birmingham and he settled in very, very nicely. Just wanted to get your opinion on his loan spell. Yeah, he's been good. He's been very good, actually. I think the Championship's had a positive impact on him, really. I feel like he's um, sort of brought him out as a player, really, and sort of seasoned him up a little bit. He's been lively and energetic. He's got a good attitude and a Fantastic desire to win the ball. I mean, like he, like um, Paul was saying earlier, he was a you know loves a good tackle. He is a bit of a dirty player at times, but you know that's what we appreciate as Blues fans. Really, we've not seen that in uh, midfield for some time now. And um, yeah, you know, Blues fans, we do love a good challenge. We do love a, a rotten player sometimes. Robbie Savage was always that type of player, just getting into players' heads and trying to nick away at them and everything. But I feel like that's something that he brought to the team this season. And yeah, I mean, I didn't expect him to be as involved in the team as I thought he was. I thought he'd be a sub player really when he started out. Um, not really starting then, but, um, you know, he was just like a player we could just give some time for. But, you know, he wanted it really. And that first game against Preston, he came off uh, He came off the bench in that game. You know, he got us to win that day pretty much just at the end. We took the lead through Maxime Collin from the back post. And then when he came on for the, in the midfield later on, he was just fantastic, really. He just worked his ass off, really. And it just like completely took Preston away. It was like, right, we're we're sitting in deep now. We've got to try and try and um keep the ball for a bit. Then Hannibal comes in and just throws a massive curveball into everything and just smacking into players, getting at them. It was like, Yeah, I can get behind this. This is gonna be great. And that was probably one of the most enjoyable games that I've been to the blues in a long time. That was. We took a couple of thousand there. Um the atmosphere was fantastic. We were you know, we're electric, really. Um, team were tireless, and Hannibal at the end just just got us over the line. Like I said, you know, he was just fantastic at the end. And um, I mean, that's a pro and a con for him, really, because he can be reckless when he doesn't get his way. Sometimes um, he does complain quite a lot, which I'm not a big fan of. I like the fact that he's getting stuck in and everything, but you know, I don't like wingers. I always feel like the Villa sort of always used to do that. You know, they're just like. Elite level cheaters, basically. So uh, with the Blues, it's like we're putting the 
horrible challenges and everything, but we'll just be like, yeah, whatever. That was it, you know. So, um, yeah, I think like for him, he just if he's going to be reckless. He's going to be reckless, and I don't think he should really hold. He should really complain about it to the referee when he goes over in a tackle that he doesn't feel like he's won or anything. Um, but I feel like that's the type of player he is, and you know, I feel like from this season he's become a fan's favourite just from the fact that he's willing to work hard, willing to fight for some challenges. You know, and that's all you need really to be a cult hero at the Blues, really. And that's um, that's uh, we'll definitely remember him from this season for that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I w- every time I, I I thought now and again I'll check uh, Birmingham's results because I also wanted to check on Chung as well. Um, mm. you know, just see how he's doing. And uh, <laughs> most of the time when I had a look, Hannibal always come out with a yellow card, and it tends to be before half time that I get a yellow card as well. Honestly, <laughs> it's like the first half rules basically is just don't get booked or anything. You know, don't concede right before half time. That's another one of those. Getting booked in the first half, it's like, come on, man. We're going to have 45 minutes of this, especially if you were winning. It's just like, man, just relax for a bit, okay? You, you're a good player and everything. We enjoy, your, we enjoy your work, right? But just, you know, calm down a little bit. Don't get yellow carded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just wanted to say hello as well to Vincent in the chat. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Um, I'll let this geezer know it's raining and thundering over Birmingham City Ground, which is 30 minutes from my house. But I'll say glory, glory, Man United, best team in the world. Um, and hey there, uh, Red Blue Mad, thank you for coming in. Hope you are well. Uh, good luck to him. Covered every blade of grass for us last season. Oh, that's fantastic to hear as well. Do you know one thing that... There was something that Troy Beanie said. I can't remember if he said it this season or last season. But he said one thing, like, about Manchester United players who go on loan, they play that... They want to play for the, the club. Because uh, mm. you see different uh, players from different clubs and they, you, you know that they want to come for the money or whatever. But Manchester United players who come on loan always put in that extra um, extra work. Yeah, they do. Yeah, definitely. I, it's, it's. I don't know why, really, but I, I, I imagine they've got the eyes on them. Like, that's the thing. So, like, there'll be scouts from United and people out there to look on them and make sure that they're doing all right. I mean, Ahmed Diallo, who's been playing for Sunderland this season, will definitely be on the look from United this season. They'll be, you know, I'm not too sure whether he'll rejoin the United squad as quickly as everybody might think he might do. You know, I feel like he might get another loan spell. But he might get like a couple of preseason games, a couple of games towards the start of the season, and who knows if he plays really well, then he might end up being in the squad for the season. But I feel like with Hannibal, he's been thrown into a different squad. So you compare Sunderland and Blues, for example. So Sunderland have had a terrible time in the past few seasons where they've gone down to League One and even so, like they've, mm-hmm. they're on the way back now and they've managed to restart their team really. So I feel like Hannibal would have been looked upon more favourably really than. Um, Diallo for example because if he was in similar teams like with the Blues we're sort of we're just sort of stuck of where we are at the moment and I feel like Chong might have suffered from that as well he's a good player and you can see that but you know sometimes when you're not quite in the right environment sometimes it can have a negative effect on you but I think the championship is good for you because it just so it's just one step down from the Premier League so if you're good enough you get back into the Premier League whereas if you're in League One like Sunderland have been and some of those bigger teams as well that are still in League One it's great to be there, but as well, the, the reward is the championship, really. So that's it's not really that great, really. So I feel like with Diallo, for example, that's why he probably could see that he could be in the United squad because it's only one step down from the Premier League. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens to Hannibal. I know that there's been rumours about him in the news of a couple of days ago and whatever, where he's going to. But, you know, loan players do want to work hard because they got that opportunity to be in the United squad if they work hard enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. And I think it was good for Troy Deeney to say that as well, just because I know over the years we've had a few players coming from Birmingham in particular alone. Uh, Chung and Hannibal being more recent and going back from like Jesse Lingard, for instance. So we, I think uh, Manchester United and Birmingham, they do have a good relationship when it does come to the lone players. Yeah, we do. I think the reason for that being... I'm not too sure, and I'm not too sure if it's particularly true or anything, but our managing, uh, whatever his title is, actually, I can't remember at the moment, but Craig Gardner, basically, his old teammate, Darren Fletcher, 
obviously have good links to each other from West Brom. So I imagine that there is like a bit of a, a you know, a bit of a bond there that they could sort of swap players around and everything. So it's like, obviously we've not got uh, got to offer them much in terms of players. So um, I feel like we'll sort of, he, he can send some players to us to get him some game time just to send back in that time. But yeah, I, I feel like, you know, players will want to work hard when the punt comes to the blues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, with Hannibal as well, what do you think is his best position is? Because I think last season when he did come in Man United into the Manchester United squad, we was all happy saying, "Oh, he was the only one who gave the crap when we lost a, a big massive margin against Liverpool, just throwing in these uh, horrible tackles, and we just loved it." And I've seen a couple of places where he's played. Like I've seen him play on the left hand side. I've seen him play in the ten role. So I know he. I know with Birmingham as well, they do have different formations. So mm. I just wanted to see where was most suited for him at his time. I'm not too sure. I think he works better attackingly. I don't think he's as disciplined just yet to be a defensive player. With him being a younger player, he's. I think he's still only 19. He's approaching 20. Um, yeah, I, th- I feel like some of the younger players need a bit more freedom and then they can sort of find their role as time goes on. But it's been difficult for us as well, though, because like we've not really got players who can find a position anyway. So we've got players like Janino Bakuna, who, you know, is great going forward, probably not great coming back as well. So we've we've got two players in that attacking role, but not very good coming back sort of role. So it's like, you know, who do we play really? So at times this season, it's been Hannibal going forward and Bakuna sits a little bit deeper. And then sometimes it's Bakuna going forward and then Hannibal sitting a little bit deeper. My dogs are barking. <laughs> um, I was right in the middle of a point there, and I stopped fucking going off now. They're, um... <sighs> <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but yeah, they've um. <sighs> Be quiet. <laughs> the um. Yeah, I don't know, really. I was, I, I think he's better going forward. That's basically my point is. But I don't know. He could find an attacking midfield role better. Um, I don't think out wide suits him or many of the midfielders we've got this season. Um, you know, what, wide players are very different. I think Chong's definitely fitting into that role better now. I feel like we, we experimented with him being in the attacking midfield role. Um but I don't know. You've got to have you have different abilities, really. You've got to have like agility, and you've got to have pace. You've got to get the ball into control very quickly. I think Chong can do that better than Hannibal. Hannibal can battle with it for some times, and then you know that that's why he, he fits better in a central role. So out wide, he definitely doesn't. But I, I don't think he would fit particularly great in this in a stern CDM role. He's not quite that disciplined mm. player. Um, I think he does demand a bit more of a free roam role. So. Um, I think going forward is his best option. So I think eventually he might grow into an attacking midfielder. But for now, we'll see. He's got to have, he's got to have a few more seasons, really, and some seasons as well when he's winning some games and getting his confidence up as well. Because there's been runs this season where it's just been like soul draining, and that's not good for a young player trying to mm-hmm. work work his way up the table and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I get that completely. And from what I've been hearing as well, he's supposed to have had a, a good connection on the pitch with Chong too, as well as off the pitch. Who Chong was this with Hannibal? Uh, Chong and Hannibal, yeah. Yeah, I imagine they would. Yeah, I think that they were similar age um, when at the United squad and everything. Um, they might not have known each other at the time, but I think they, they... may have been a, a year difference, maybe on the actual. Uh, academy i believe yeah but they, they yeah i feel like obviously you've got a common interest there haven't you when you've both come from united um obviously chong is now our player so he'll, he wants to be thinking about what he's thinking you know what made him join the club and everything and you know it's it's a good place to be you know and i feel like they can share that interest and share that you know with each other you know and he, i think he's a likable person really you know he's got some character about him you know, he's a great footballer. He's a really en- enjoyable person to watch on the pitch. So, yeah, I feel like they would have a good relationship together. They'd be um, <laughs> good mm-hmm. partners in crime, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Before I get onto the question, uh, the questions in the chat, there was actually, um, there was. I wanted to, to quickly touch on the goal, what Hannibal scored, because I literally watched the goal about five times and I thought it's a very beautiful goal. Yeah, it was. It was. 
I was didn't really see it well at the time because we were protesting that night um, to get rid of the owners and everything, which does look like it's actually about to happen now. So I'm very happy about that. Um, but I was sort of stood sort of in the middle bit of the stadium. And uh, I sort of look up because we're, we're holding the banners up at this point to try and get on Sky. So he takes the free kick quickly and the keeper doesn't catch it out. It's just like, it's just in all of a sudden. But watching it back on the replay, he definitely spots him off his line. And if, he, if he's just like, I, I don't think he, he's just got that bravery sometimes to try things. And sometimes it comes off. And then sometimes when you're live on Sky against your rivals, you know, it's just, it's come off brilliantly and I don't know what the keeper's doing. He's at fault for both of the goals, actually, because we win 2-0 that night. The first one is, you know, I think he can just be like a bit of an error, perhaps. You know, he's not seen the free kick being taken quickly. He's left his near post open, and that's in, really. And then the second goal, though, the ball comes in from a corner. He can literally just come out and catch it, and he misses it, and our, our Bielik heads it in, and we win 2-0. So it's just like, I mean, come on you got to be a bit better than that. Yeah. But yeah, that free kick was fantastic. It was just like, it caught everybody off guard. It caught me off guard. It was just, yeah, it was a good night actually in the end. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Good to hear that as well. Um, there's a few more people who came in the chat. Hey there, Endsman. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Um, hey there, Ian, my favourite Darlington fan. Thank you for coming in. Hope you are well. Um, hey there as well, Andrew. Thank you for coming into the chat. Hope you are well. So um, we'll go into some of the questions. Uh, we'll start off with Ravi's question on how has the Birmingham manager got the best out of Hannibal and developed him? I think he's developed him just by letting him play sometimes. I think we've constricted ourselves a lot this season just by trying to be a bit too formulaic. I mm -hmm. think we've played our best football this season just by putting a team out um, and sort of letting them run free. I know that sounds a bit stupid, but really it's it's kind of the truth, really, because like we've played some really good football at the times this season. When we try and you know come up with too much of a strategic plan, like I remember we went away to Watford, and our, it was clear from the soon the ball got kicked off. Excuse me, uh, was that we were just there to grab a point, and it just completely collapsed in on itself the whole time. It was just it was a complete and utter catastrophe that game was. We just didn't know what to do. So I feel like we've got to try and get players like Hannibal, who, like I said, is a bit more of a free-roaming player just from the his age and he's not quite matured as a footballer just yet. So I feel like just letting him play, letting him have some minutes, understand what the championship's like, understand the standards and the fitness and everything. It's got the best out of him, to be honest. And really, we should have done that more this season, but it's a learning curve for John Eustace as well, who's a new championship manager. He's not really... Uh, he's never managed a team at this level before as the manager. He's been coached in before with Steve Warburton at QPR before, but not at this top level as a manager yet. So um, it's a learning curve for him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, was it a former player I had last season as a manager, if I'm not mistaken? Was yeah, we had Lee Bowyer. Yeah. We had Lee Bowyer, yeah. He was our manager last season. Um was a big fan of his. Clearly the team and the players just weren't happy with him at the time. I'd have I'd have it I'd have him back. You know, I think he was a good manager. I thought he worked well. Um, just some of the players probably just didn't work with him in the end, which is a bit disappointing, but what can you do really? So yeah, we've got uses now. We can't keep going backwards because it's not gonna work really. We can't keep on trying to reinvent ourselves. We've got to go forward. And um yeah, I feel like that's why players like Hannibal worked this season because Eustace was new to the job and he was just trying things out. So he thought if we've got Hannibal on the table, let's go for him, see how good he is. And for those first few months, he was absolutely fantastic. It was, mm -hmm. you know, he was brilliant, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hey there, Niall. Thanks for coming into the chat. Hope you are well. Um, Ravi's also said, what kind of, what formation gets the best out of Hannibal? I think the best formation gets the most out of most players in the championship would be a 4-2-3-1. I think it's probably the best one you can have in the championship, really. It's not a 4-3-3. It's not sticking five at the back, which I completely object to. You've got some yeah. good defensive options. You've got some good attacking options. It works. I feel like it's a good even split of um, the formation, really. And I feel like players like Hannibal will definitely um, work with because he's got a good midfield there with him that can all sort of help around with him. So if he's heading out to the left-hand side to go and win a challenge, then there's the left midfielder and also the left-back can push up. Same with the right, right side of it. And then in the midfield area, you've got the two 
sitting defensive midfielders who can help squash him from there because that he will just run and run forever pretty much. He is so tireless. Um particularly when he's got his form and his confidence, there is literally no stopping with him at that point. So I think that's why that attacking midfield role is so perfect for him. He just sort of goes here and there and everywhere and just winning challenges and you know, he's sometimes he's fouls, but you know, that I don't mind that about players, you know, a couple of tactical fouls here, you know, and there, but it's good. I like it. I do like that about him. It's really enjoyable to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's what, how we felt last season, especially knowing that we was going through a, a rough spell last season. And I think sometimes he just provided that kind of little bit of energy, which nobody else really gave. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember when he was at the, um, was it the United Liverpool game? Um, yeah. Last season that he first played. Was it the first, first game or was few? Yeah. Um, I think it was his first. I think it was his first game, yeah. Because he came on, and I think the game was already four 0 at that point. Um, but yeah, he, even though he was a bit reckless, it was like at least that's something. Because that whole United performance before was just it was it was awful, really. So he comes on, he gives a bit of a a can do sort of attitude, and you know he, he gives himself a name. You know he might have been running around and making a fool of himself. It's at least something though. So. Yeah, I, I do remember that game. I feel like I remember talking about it last season, actually, on this on this show, because that was a bit of a, of a weird um, parallel, that is, talking about Chong yeah. and then talking about, oh, we've got this player Hannibal. Hey, it'd be perfect for us. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, lo- uh, which, uh, which young player are you interested in next year? You can have anyone you want. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Ahmed Diallo, if you're asking. That's, that's the one I love. Which well, we also linked to as well before he joined Sunderland. Well done, Blues. You got oh, the wrong yeah. <laughs> he was linked last season, wasn't he, for the second half of last season before mm-hmm. you went and got Mengi on loan, wasn't it? And then he ended up going to Rangers instead. Yeah, I mean, Mengi as well was a decent play. It's a really good academy that United have got. I think they really misunderestimate that. And I think, like, I still see them, obviously, not trying to go too, top, too off topic, but like with the United, they go out, they go about signing too many players. I mean, Mason Mounts has been signed this recently, and that's good and everything. But you just see, like, there's players around Manchester and all those type of players that are just as good. And I feel like a little bit of attention here and there for them really could help sort of the younger players around there. Because, I, I mean, like, Phil Foden for Manchester City, really, it's a perfect example. I'll uh, I'll stop now with the <laughs> Manchester yeah. references before we talk about the European Cup. <laughs> it's fine. I'm surprised you didn't mention Ganacho <laughs> about what it is. <laughs> nah, I think Ganacho could be actually more of an influence for you next season than you realise, yeah, actually, because his so. performance when he came on in the FA Cup final was probably the best out of all the attacking players that day, really. Yeah, I do believe so as well. I think he's a fantastic player. Um, hey there, Liam. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Both Vincent and Ian has asked similar questions, and it was just about the ground situation because I know you don't have your whole ground open. So is that going to be fully open next year? Oh, we can hope. We can really, really hope. Um, plans are in place. Um, work is being done. The only problem that I could perhaps see now is more delays. Um the if I'm right in thinking it's November is the earliest when those stands can be open, um, which is pretty poor, really. I'm not very happy with that in the slightest, really. I want them open sooner. I still don't know what's holding up too long, but November is the date or the deadline that's meant to be a back open for, which is how many more months of a half empty stadium? I mean, like it's they, they've proposed um, some safe standing behind the goal in the Tilton end where the bottom tiers are. Um, which I think is a good idea, but whether people are going to buy season tickets in that se- in that bit uh, before the season starts, I don't know. I don't really know how they're going to police all that yet because it's obviously not going to be open in time for the season to start. So I don't know what's going to go on with that. Um, but short in, uh, it, to put it shortly, I just want them open and hopefully they will be open by November. And if they're not then I'm going to get really cross because I've waited a very long time for it at this point. No, no, it has been going on for f- far too long, hasn't it? Because I remember I, I remember hearing when it has been closed and uh, and then you hearing about the owners not what well, the owners at the moment are not wanting to put investment in. It's just not going well whatsoever, is it? No, and it's been far too long, like you say. I think it's roughly about two years now since it's been all going on and like 
you know, no, no other team in the world has to put up with a stand being closed for two years. It's ridiculous. I don't understand what the hell's going on, to be honest. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, Andrew has said, how many seasons in a row have Birmingham finished in the bottom half of the championship? Seems like forever. It's been since, well, actually, I think in total. So we've been down for, how many seasons we've been down for now? I think we've been down for 11 seasons now since we were last relegated. I think out of those 11 seasons, we've finished in the bottom half for eight of them. Um, but I definitely know we've finished below 17th since the 2016-17 season. Um, we finished 17th again this season, so it's, we're, just, we're just at home sitting in that position now. Um, but I think it just shows like the you know, the level of desire really the club's had in these past few years. And obviously we've got new investors now. It does look like things are going to pick up a little bit. Um, and hopefully we can get a bit of progress. But yeah, it does feel like forever. It feels like forever for me. And we won the Carling Cup nearly 10 years ago, so it's just like, yeah, you know, it's just, nothing's happened in these last eleven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, and uh, hopefully with the new investment, that will probably help massively in terms of Birmingham. So, um, I know Ravi has asked, can Hannibal get a game time at United? But recent news is what uh, been reported in the last couple of days is that he's actually linked to Barissa Dortmund on a, a permanent move to succeed Jude Bellingham. I wanted to know what your thoughts on that because yourself would have watched a lot of Jude Bellingham and you've seen Hannibal this season. Do you see them kind of connections? Do you think it would work? Yeah, I can. I can see the understanding from it. Um, they're not too similar players, but I can understand the sort of level of attitude, I think. You can... I think with younger players, particularly with managers, they want to have like players who've got good attitude because you can always improve on their skill and ability. So I feel like that's something that managers, or I don't know who the Dortmund manager is, who would definitely look at and think mm. that's definitely something they can work on. Um, but yeah, obviously Bellingham's the far better player, but still like Hannibal, I feel like this season from watching him, he's, he's got that attitude, he's got that ability to go and do those things. Um, I mean, obviously, watching Jude over the years, he's probably got some similar things from the way I saw him at the Blues. Um, and obviously, going into Dortmund's team and everything. And who knows, he could grow like that. But they definitely need to find a replacement for Bellingham. And they, they definitely will as well. You know, they're not stupid. They're not us. They're not us. Because like, we had a 22 goal scorer of a season, a striker in Che Adams, and then sold him. Um, and then looked for a replacement. And then whilst that was happening, we decided to sell our other striker as well. So, um, Whoever came up with that idea was, uh, you deserve a good pat on the back. Maybe a big firm one, actually. That might just, uh, I mean, that might be a good one, actually. But yeah, it's just idiotic, really. But I feel like with, yeah, Hannibal, he can definitely fit into a Dortmund team. I think the German league might be quite good for him, actually. It's a good competitive league. Some decent teams that are coming from there now. Um, and yeah, it was a, so disappointed that Dortmund didn't win the league with you. Though it's just, it would have been perfect to have rounded it off when, before he went to Real Madrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think, like, for you, in your opinion, with Hannibal, do you think it's probably better for him to try to get into that Manchester United team, or do you think probably Dortmund might be just the better, the better thing for him now? Well, it all depends. If United want him in the team, then mm. he should work towards it. Um, I think there's so much competition there in that United team, though. I mean, like, you've still got players like Fernandes and Casemiro and Fred. You know, they are just going to be in that team really so for Hannibal to come in and just be like no this player's in there now I don't know it's just too long really I feel like Dortmund probably will um demand more of it really I feel like that's something you mm. probably attract to as well there's probably more game time for them as well which yeah. is a shame really mm-hmm. Vincent was funny when he said Dortmund bugger off but um <laughs> A lot of people are saying, like, oh, we don't want uh, Hannibal to go and we're saying 100 mil for Hannibal and nothing more, <laughs> and nothing less, you know, little comments like that. But I think for me, like, you know it when you're going to Barista Dortmund, you're a fantastic young player and you're going to turn into a fantastic star. You look up who they've done. Uh, Erling Haaland, Drew Bellingham, Jadon Sancho, all of them have yeah. t- uh, went into a- fantastic stars there to the end of their career of Dortmund, and c- some of- we're- it's time to tell of how Jude will come at Real Madrid. Um, and Erling Haaland become the the best pl- one of the best players in the Premier League. So, um, 
it is possible that if Jude was, I mean, if Hannibal was to go to uh, Bristol, he could be turned out just like one of them. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, that's one point was before really. It's like it sort of feels like a bit of a dead end with United. I mean, that's yeah. in the nicest way possible. But you know, you go to Dortmund. There's a new opportunity there. There's some game time that you can have. You know, there's different avenues you can explore as well. I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's obviously for him to decide and. Uh, if if Manchester United want to keep him as well, but I'm sure if Dortmund are interested in him, he'll he'll work there because mm-hmm. he's got the attitude. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um. Hey there, Daz. Thanks for coming in. I'm well, thank you. Hope you are well too. And we'll finish off with Nile's question about your team tried to get Nisbet from Hibs back in January, and the deal fell through. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that was a few seasons ago. Now that was, um, I think it was the twenty twenty one that year. I mean, obviously we've we bought Sam Cosgrove, who came from um, that Scottish league in the same season, um, and the Millwall signing him. Yeah, Millwall are an interesting team actually to take yeah. into account. Actually, obviously Gary Rowett, who's one of our old managers, is now there doing pretty decent. Just missed out on the playoffs on the last day of the season. Um, yeah, I feel like. Um, yeah, a lot of those players that really have flourished elsewhere, we should have paid closer attention to, really. And, you know, they might not have worked with the Blues. You know, it's obviously down to some teams and how they work together in different um, different teams and everything. But, you know, I, I feel like Nisbet would have been a decent striker for us. You know, I mean, it would have been better if we had done it whilst we had Chad Adams going to Southampton. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that one that works out. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I said, um, if Millwall get into the Premier League, that would just be, cra- would be crazy, crazy yes. scenes. <laughs> well, obviously, with um, West Ham winning the Conference League now, I feel like that would have been a tasty rivalry had that up in next season. But um, now we've got Luton in the Premier League next season. How strange is that going to be? I don't know. The ground itself. Have you been to that ground before, just out of curiosity? Yeah, it was the first game of the season last season. Um I, I imagine it's still going to be their stadium for next season. I'm not too sure yeah. whether they've rebuilt it yet. But I was hearing as well that they've got some sort of... Fi- um, what's that bloody word? Um, I think they've got to have like some sort of regulation on how the stadium is ran because it is so different from every other stadium in the world. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's very claustrophobic. It's very close to everybody. You sort of got a step. We got like half a step, actually. So you got like where we were stood anyway in the away end. So we had about a metre of actual viewing of the picture we basically had. It was very dark and very <laughs> very close together. And plus it was in July as well, when, or July and August, wherever it was. So it was very hot. I had a headache throughout most of the game and my ankles was in bits because oh. I was stood on like half a step there. So my foot was literally like on both of them, sort of doing like a balance like, with my heels going off like that. It's just like, oh. I need to get out of here. It was a nil-nil draw as well, so it's like, brilliant. Come all the way for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting to see Luton for sure. And um, Hey there, Luca. Thanks for coming in. Um, glad you're well. I'm well too. Uh, so we'll wrap it up here. Thank you, Tommy, for coming on. It's been a great show. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I'm a bit under the weather at the moment. It's very hot Aww. at the moment. Um I've been working quite a lot recently as well, so I might have been picking that up or anything. But yeah, I'm just a bit fogged up really with all the hay fever stuff and that. I've been drinking a lot of water today. Um, my voice has been slowly droning along in this interview, particularly mm-hmm. trying to get something back from it, but um, yeah, it's not working. <laughs> oh, I hope you're feeling a lot better soon. Um, I do as well wish you good luck for next season and uh, for Birmingham. And uh, if you want to take one of our loan players next season, like if you want to take a uh, Charlie McNeil on loan, for instance, who's been on Newport, you can more than mm. uh, more than happy take him. Um, because I always like to see it as well, like uh, that great connection with the uh, each football club. So, um, and it's been great as always to have you on, Tommy. So, uh, wish you the luck, and I hope you get better soon. Would you like to <laughs> shout out your socials? Yes, uh, you can find Blues Focus, who I work with at uh, Twitter and Instagram at Blues Focus. Uh, and you can also follow me uh, on my YouTube channel at Tommy Kelsall. Uh, did a Man United and City vlog for the FA Cup final with a United mate of mine. Uh, it was good to go. It was great. We were right up in the gods and everything. 
Um, it would have been a better had the United won everything, but um, yeah, probably did mm-hmm. this at the worst time really with uh, City winning the treble yesterday as well. It's not oh. great, isn't it? Really? <laughs> it is what it is, but uh, it's distressing. But it it hopefully it's that motivation now just to bring us forward and um, to get into that better t- that better team. I have put your FA Cup vlog in the live chat so um a lot of people could watch that check it out it's got a good amount of views as well mm. um so you it was really really fantastic i really enjoyed it I watched it twice actually because <laughs> i really liked it so uh thank you very much tommy as i say best of luck for that season uh go and check out police focus and tommy's channel as well um hit that like hit that share subscribe um, I'll be next live now on Tuesday for my Premier League team of the season. Uh, have a lovely evening all. Take care. Bye-bye.